Today we're going to talk about Passive House with two experts uh, in New York, uh, Chris Benedict, RA, registered architect, uh, who's the architect on this project, and Henry Gifford, who's the mechanical systems designer. They've worked together on a ton of Passive House projects uh, in the city. Uh, this one is uh, Grove, on Grove Street in, in Brooklyn. Uh, and they've done, they're doing a renovation in place called Casa Passiva, uh, 144 apartments in, um, for Riseboro Community Partnership. And we're going to talk about some of the innovations and ideas that Chris and Henry have brought to this. But before we start, I have to mention Henry's book. If you don't have this book, Buildings Don't Lie, uh, you are way off base because this is a fantastic book. It's, I don't recommend books ever. Uh, I think this is the second book I've ever recommended in my 19 years with BD&C. So get this book. It's, it's online. You can just track it. Henry Gifford, Buildings Don't Lie. It's a terrific how-to book with tremendous illustrations and everything. So just get the book and, and you'll, you'll learn a lot. Okay, so let's talk about Grove Street. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, what, what, was the, what was the goal here with, with Grove Street? You got tenants in place and you're doing Passive House. What's, what's going on here? Well, you know, I wouldn't say it's easy to design a passive house and go through the construction process with new construction. Um, but the big issue here is the many, many existing buildings that we have. Um, and though most architects prefer doing new construction, the big problem is dealing with these existing buildings where we have tenants. So the idea here was to try to come up with a strategy where we could do a passive house treatment to the building with tenants in place with minimal disruption to their lives. Yeah. Right, exactly. Okay. And, and Henry, uh, we're going to get to into some of the mechanical systems where, where you were heavily involved, but let's take a look at, uh, uh, at some of the things. Uh, one of the key things was sealing the building and you used uh, a, um, a stow product called gold coat, I guess, to, really get to the brick on that building. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you sealed the building there, Chris, if, if you would. And, and Henry, if you well, want to pitch in with any, any thoughts here, you're more than welcome, please. Uh, we'd like to insulate buildings on the outside, whether it's existing buildings or new construction. And a nice way to do it that has worked um, with our lower door tests, we've passed them, um, is with this liquid applied membrane uh, in this case, we're using Stowe Gold Coat because we will also be applying uh, more Stowe products, uh, EFIS, on the exterior. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to monitor this product because it's gold. We can apply it and we can look, we can inspect, we can make sure that no places are missing and get a complete uh, coverage. Oh, so the color itself actually helps you identify any any errors or, and yes. that's interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, on the windows, you, you're, you're using these Shuko, Shuko windows, which is, I think, start, it's a German company. Uh, how, how did you find these Shuko windows and how are you sealing those? Well, um, over time, we've had a lot of experience myself and with uh, my colleagues um, using different windows. Um, and we found a reliable supplier for the Shuko product. Um, this product is a uh, vinyl window and um, it's very affordable and is wonderfully airtight and very high performance and so mm -hmm. we, we're using these um, they're installed inside the window openings with a half inch gap around the sides and the top which we can then completely fill and air seal yeah um, and and in passive house you're always using casement to to get that tight seal and pulling pulling the window in rather than double pane this way aren't you yeah, it's not really possible to get a tight double hung window. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and you're going to do over insulation with this uh, as well with eight inch eight inch foam uh, on the on the exterior. So that's that's going to be add tremendously to the insulation. Let's go up to the roof. Oh, it's going to completely <laughs> change the experience of the tenants. Yeah, um, let's go up to the roof. Uh, you've got a essentially a low slope flat roof here. Uh, and you're going to do an, an Irma. What's an Irma? Is that Irma La Deuce? What, what's Irma? <laughs> <laughs> well, AKA upside down roof. Uh, um, okay. So the first thing we do is put down our drainage plane, which is our, our roofing. We make sure everything's pitched to drain 
properly. We have no standing water or anything in any of the places on the roof. And then after that, we put down a, um, a uh, kind of a bumpled material that allows water to drain, a drainage mat. And on top of that, we put foam. And in this case, we're using an interesting product called Tea Clear, which is a foam for the top surface that has a layer of concrete on the foam itself. Yeah. So they'll all fit together and we'll have a finished concrete surface. Yeah, that. interesting. And then the you're- nice thing about that product is that it's lightweight for a building that has wood joists. Ah, interesting. So you're not adding literally tons of weight, to, weight. to the yeah. roof. Yeah, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're, uh, and then you're doing some metal, metal flashing to make sure from, from the walls down to the roof and get a nice, yeah. nice sweep of the, of the, any rain and snow, uh, whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we get into some of the mechanical systems and, uh, uh, and by the way, IRMA stands for uh, Inverted Roof Membrane Assembly, if I remember correctly. Is that, uh, that's what an IRMA is, just in case. Uh, so we're going to talk about ERVs and uh, energy recovery uh, ventilators and, and condensers here. Uh, Henry, can you talk a little bit about the mechanical systems and what you were trying to achieve here? Well, the ventilation is separate from the heating and cooling. Right. Combining them is asking for complication and disaster and almost the need to have too much electronic junk. So the ventilation system is a ventilation only system. It does not attempt to provide any type of ventilation. And when we say ventilation, mean we, we mean serving 100% fresh outdoor air. We serve no used air to anyone at any time. Mm -hmm. So we have energy recovery ventilators on the roof, the ducts going down the outside of the old masonry of the building, but the ducts are covered with the new EFIS foam. Mm -hmm. And we serve 100% outdoor air into the bedrooms, the exhaust from the kitchens and bathrooms. Okay. And we turn it on and we leave it run and it's very boring. <laughs> well, that's the way it should be. It's very quiet too, isn't it? Is it? Is it's quiet? Is it not? Yeah, you, sure. You, you're, not, you're not hearing a lot of fan action all the time. Uh, I've noticed that. No, the fan, the fans are on the roof. When we, in some buildings, we've done ERVs in the apartments, and we use uh, certain lengths of ducts and other tricks to reduce the noise. But there is still noise sometimes velocity noise, sometimes fan noise. So at least the fan noise is pretty much a no-brainer. It's gone away, at least away from the apartment because it's out on the roof. Okay. So right. uh, we size the ducts and everything to re uh, get rid of the velocity noise. Now, Chris, you, you've done a mock-up uh, of how you're going to in in enclose the ERVs, and you had kind of a public relations uh, idea behind this as well, didn't you? <laughs> well, we've had so many years of talking with reporters and they'll send a photographer out to our job site <laughs> and the photographer is looking for a green roof and a solar panel. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we think guilty, those guilty. Are the, <laughs> those are the last things that should be done in your energy efficient building. Right. So we wanted to give uh, a photographer a photo opportunity. So we decided to make all the ERVs look like um, friendly robots. So we're going to have a number of friendly robots strewn around our roofscape. Um, I think it's going to look really fun. Okay. And you did a mock-up, which is really great. And you, you condent, you're uh, enclosing it in this, these boxes that you found that's, uh, that's kind of interesting too. So um, talk about the... Uh, yeah, uh, the they're, they're, they are actually indoor... They're actually indoor units that we are putting outside, so they need to be in a waterproof and insulated enclosure. The, the ERVs are indoor indoor ERVs. Yeah, so, yeah. That's okay. the robot. Right. Okay. All right. And you're using a uh, uh, Dakin EV Premium condensers, I believe. Up. Oh, we, did we lose Henry here? Okay. Oh, there he is. Okay. Um, uh, and we're showing some pictures here of how you've you, you have to make the right connection. Uh, and so forth. And here the, and then you're, Henry, you're bringing the ducts down 
for the side of the brain. Tell us how the ducts are working to feed into uh, uh, input and output on the uh, on the units. Well, the Mitsubishi heat pumps have no ducts. It's the copper refrigerant tubing connecting the outdoor unit to the indoor unit. Okay. So right. we, don't, we don't call the outdoor unit the condenser. I know everyone else but us does, but it's an Wait. evaporator half the year. Okay. So okay. I call it the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. Okay. Or the All outdoor right. half and the indoor half. All right. Okay. But the only thing between them is the copper tubing. Okay. All right. Let's talk about um, uh, the, you're going to do a boiler replacement in this. You, it's a typical, I mean, what's the, what's the year on these buildings, by the way? Uh, do you know what? Uh, Early 1900s. I think they're about 1900s. Yeah. Yeah. That's look look like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is, I, I was born about seven blocks from this. So I, 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 kind, of, <laughs> I kind of know it in Bushwick. So uh, you, you've got a giganda boiler in the basement. What are you going to do about that? Get rid of it and put a small, simple gas fired boiler that only heats the domestic hot water. He's cold water for the domestic hot water. We, we make sure it's generously sized so that nobody ever gets a cold shower and gets inspired to turn the water up. We, we heat it to 49C, also known as 120F for the people who use the obsolete unit system. And because we don't overheat it, the faucet parts last longer and we save a lot of energy by not overheating it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, but you're using natural gas and that's, there are people who are fighting the natural gas uh, situation. Why did, why did you and Chris uh, decide on natural gas? Chris, tell us what, what, what happened there? Uh, well, I think that um, we should be burning fossil fuel if we burn it responsibly. We're going to be using a small amount of gas to mm -hmm. economically and efficiently make our domestic hot water. It's cost effective to do this and the heat pumps for hot water that are available right now for multifamily are impractical. And so if we burn gas directly in the building, we are using less fuel, less fossil fuel by burning it in the basement than we would if the electric company burns it and sends us the electric and we heat the water with a heat pump. Let, let, let's conclude by uh, with a, uh, just getting an idea of what kind of energy savings and, and what kind of utility bills are we talking about here for, the, for these apartments. Uh, how, much, how much are you bringing down the energy use uh, in this building, Chris? In these buildings? Uh, you know, I don't have my hands on the exact numbers, but we are modeled with the Passive House software to be meeting the Passive House, which is 4.9 BTUs per square foot per year. Um, mm -hmm. Mixing up my, maybe mixing up my units. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, you know, I would say probably in some cases, 20% of what the building was using prior to this. Yeah. So tenants are really going to benefit from, uh, and, and the operator, Riseboro Community Partnership, is, is going to have a very low utility bill here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, well, um, I, this has been a great uh, run through of this terrific project. I, uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, what's your timeline for finishing up here, uh, Chris and Henry? Well, we expect to be mostly done by mid-2021. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I've been talking to Chris Benedict, re registered architect in, in New York, in Manhattan, uh, and a passive house expert, and Henry G Gifford, her, uh, uh, her colleague who works with her on mechanical systems design on all their passive house projects. It's been great discussion. Thanks so much for speaking with us today. Thank you.